And now we're going to take a minute to look back at all our fond memories from the year 2021. I'm sure one of you has one. As any good video game video producer on YouTube should do, I was preparing my top 10 games of the year list for 2021 for this week's episode. And let me tell you, it kind of sucked. <laughs> there was kind of not a lot going on for it. 2021 itself is a 5 out of 10. 2021 is masterpieceless. Nobody crushed it this year, and really nobody was expected to. You know those really nice tweets that are like, if you woke up today, you've already accomplished something great. Be proud of yourself. And you read something like that, and you're like, thank you, thanks. That's very affirming. It's kind of the same thing for any video game developers. If you woke up and plopped out Balan Wonderworld, you accomplished something. You basically crushed it in the 2021 sense. But understanding as we are, 2021 being masterpiece list does consequently make any top 10 list kind of devoid of any real drama. We're not watching the heavy hitters duke it out. We're watching a bunch of pretty goods roll around on top of a short hill. Go at it. You know, it's like 2021 picking your favorites is just like picking out your favorite crayon. Just, I don't, hurry up to pick one. And this is sort of the weird thing about making a show like this is that this has to be interesting to both of us for it to work. Like I can, I can make the list. I can make a video where I'm picking up chess pieces with my toes, right? And that would probably find an audience, but I really, I only want to make a video that I would want to watch. And that's where I got this week's video. I'm going to make a guide for myself and others like me who have to make a top 10 list. To you, to me, here's my goatee guide 2021. Step one, pretend like this matters. You don't have to be cynical. You don't have to be. I mean, top 10 lists can be actually helpful to people who are looking for new games they've never heard of, or, or maybe games they've dismissed initially and are worth a second glance. So if you think about it, this is kind of our chance to live the dream of being a video game advertiser. Let's do business. Step two, determine your goatee. There are going to be 10 items on this list, but we all know that only one of them matters. Number one, your game of the year or Goaty for short. Your Goaty doesn't just define your list, it defines who you are. So you may not want to necessarily pick the year's greatest achievement or the one game that you appreciated the most. It's more likely that you should probably pick the game that best defines your personality. Here's a quick guide on what your Goaty says about you. Guilty Gear Strive. I prefer fighting games. It takes two. I have a close friend or lover who I really get along with. Resident Evil Village. I like thrills. I like chills. I like the tall woman. Forza Horizon 5. I want cars and slot machines for cars and clothes. Vroom vroom all over all day. Returnal. I am a skilled expert of gaming. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I'm just happy to be here. Guardians of the Galaxy. I wish I could be Star-Lord. Monster Hunter Rise. I am kind of dumb. Chicory. I've had a rough year. Psychonauts 2. Yes, I have a taste for quirky, oversimplified psychology. Inscription. I'm a clever little gamer. Busta Fellows. I'm horny, so what? Metroid Dread. I think Ravenbeak is a perfectly acceptable name for an alien bird villain. Nintendo Rules. Hitman 3. I would prefer if you don't talk to me. Tales of Arise. I love to feed experience points to my beautiful warriors. Halo Infinite. I was a happy child when Halo 3 came out. Deathloop. I'm a bit of a cerebral action fan. I quit drinking soda five years ago. Death's Door. I know when to dodge roll. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. I have no values. And so on. If your goatee was not part of that list, congratulations. You are a special person and you deserve to be commended for that. As for me, I think I'm gonna pick Hitman 3 because I like that there's no follow-up conversation for that. You know, none really necessary. It's a well-regarded game. I can praise it. No one will debate me for it. Nobody's got any big problems with Hitman 3. I am legit. Step three, populate the rest of the list. So honestly, this part doesn't matter too much. You're gonna want two or three games no one's ever heard of before. This will make you seem non-basic. And then you wanna fill up the list with crowd pleasers. These will make you seem down to earth and in touch. Let's go to opencritic.com. We're gonna click on all platforms, 2021, and just rearrange these willy nilly. 
Now we go just outside the top 100 for our three indies. I've never heard of Bonfire Peaks. That sounds good. The Veil, Shadow of the Crown. Oh yeah, that sounds like a video game. And Arcadia Fallen. That's a wonderful title. No one will question that pick. And look at our list now, just aesthetically, that's a good looking list. It's a thing of beauty. And now we're ready for the final step. Step four, present your top 10. Look, if your top 10 list doesn't bother anyone, it's never gonna gain any traction. Your goal should be to irritate someone. Sharp-eyed viewers will notice that earlier I skipped over Busta Fellows, one of the best reviewed games of the year. That was no mistake, my friend. I'm just trying to add some drama, which is harder than ever in 2021. So omissions can be useful. Omissions sometimes are juicier than the entire list itself. And now I have my angle. Kyle's top 10 2021, Busta Fellows fans will not be pleased. Who could resist? Who's gonna not click? Who's gonna not stop scrolling and just suddenly read that title? Oh, I have to read this entire list. That's the whole point. Now, there is one last step, and this is very important. This is important whether you're sharing this list with one person or your millions of TikTok followers. You must now turn to your audience and tell them that you sincerely care and are interested in hearing about their goatee picks. You're not, but this drives engagement and most importantly, causes your internet commenters to look within themselves and reckon with the meaninglessness of their own lists. Now, if you are an internet commenter and someone has asked you to share your goatee, I would recommend not doing it. It is much more fun to put up an obviously fake answer and see who agrees with you. That said, those are my picks for 2021. I am sincerely interested in what you loved from this year, so go ahead and share your goatees in the comments below. And that is delayed input. Now, and I realize, and I realize just like taking that breath there and suddenly the mask comes off. It's like, you are probably like, that was a cheeky episode. And maybe you are interested, like Kyle, I just wanted to know what your actual goatee was. Fuck me, right? Like, I don't want to be, I'm sorry. So let me tell you that sincerely, I do think it's Monster Hunter Rise, which unfortunately does mean that it says about me that I am kind of dumb. Anyway, I will be back next week with more delayed input, and I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. So I feel like this week's episode ended on like a like a, a like a maybe unnecessarily cynical note where I'm like, don't tell me your goatee, I don't care. The truth is I don't care about your goatee, don't tell me. But I wanted to think of something where it's like, what would I like feedback on? in the comments. And I got something. Um, th it's about your, your console boxes and what you do with them. Cause I still have this, you know, the, the, the PlayStation five came out a year plus ago and this is still just hanging around in my room, you know, apartment living, you don't have a ton of space. It's like, there's mucho hairs on the inside. He's been at least napping in there once. Um, it's nasty. It's nasty. And I want to throw it away. But the presumption is someday you will move out of this apartment and the PlayStation 5 itself, she's got curves. She's not a thing you can just stack with other things. You either have to blanket her up or keep the box. Keep that box that's perfectly folded and molded to just slide it in and then your PlayStation 5 will never be dented. Otherwise, what are you doing? You, you put a blanket around your PlayStation 5 and drive with it in the front passenger seat. So what I was going to ask you is like, can I, can I just throw it away? Basically, I'm looking for affirmation that it's okay to throw away a box like that. Do you, are you like, are you going to blanket it up when you move? When you go to a friend's house, do you blanket it up? There's no friend I would take my PlayStation 5 to, but hypothetically, you might have that scenario. What what is one to do? Because Xbox with the Xbox, it's just a rectangle, dude. You can slide that into you can slide it into anything. This this is a PlayStation Five is a gobbly wobbly.